In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One thing I have asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? You seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen. Christ, have mercy. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Reading from the psalm, Psalm 147, verse 1. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. Lord, it is good to praise you. We were made to praise you. We will spend eternity praising you. And yet it's hard to praise you in exile. By the rivers of Babylon we've hung up our hearts. We are not saints of exile today. And I suppose any, any of you listening to this feel that too as you're unable to be at church, unable to be with God's people. But it is still good to sing praises to our God, pleasant and fitting to praise him. Isaiah 40 verse 10 and 11, Isaiah writes, See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with them, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Lord, thank you that you are that shepherd God. And even though the, the burden of being an under-shepherd weighs heavily, especially as I'm unable to be with my people, Lord, thank you that you, ca you carry them. You, carry, you can carry them through today you carry them through any Wednesday. Thank you that you are a shepherd, a gentle shepherd, a shepherd who carries your people close to your heart. Help us to know that we are held close to you at this time by our work, but by your, your great love. Amen. From Acts 15, the letter that the council in Jerusalem sent to the, uh, the Gentile believers about how, what, to what extent they needed to obey Jewish rules in order to become, in order to be Christians, to live as Christians. Then the apostles and elders uh, with the whole church decided to choose some of their own men and send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. They chose Judas, called Barsabbas, and Silas, men who were leaders among the believers. With them they sent the following letter. The apostles and elders, your brothers, 
to the Gentile believers in Antioch, Syria and Cilicia. Greetings. We have heard that some went out from us without our authorization and disturbed you, troubling your minds by what they said. So we all agreed to choose some men and send them to you with our dear friends Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore we are sending Judas and Silas to confirm by word of mouth what we are writing. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to burden you with anything beyond the following requirements. You are to abstain from food sacrificed to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals and from sexual immorality. You will do well to avoid these things. Farewell. Meditation today, I have reading uh, about uh, the, this monk Columbanus, it was about when he faced a, a similar issue, issue and how he addressed it. Columbanus' diplomatic skills are clearly evidenced in the following letter he wrote to the newly elected Pope in 604 or 607 about the divisive question of the date for celebrating Easter. Give us your opinion. It will be a sweet consolation in our labours. You will thus confirm, if it is not contrary to the faith, the tradition of our predecessors. Thereby we shall be able, through your decision, to observe in our pilgrimage the rite of Easter as we have received it from our ancestors. We cannot do justice to the merits of the case as our op opponents indulge more in rage than reason, than reason. But we now, at the opportune moment, ask for the vote which your authority can give, so that with a decision we may be able to live amongst those men with a peace of, of church unity. This is what the Holy Fathers, namely Polycarp and Pope Anicetus, taught, to live without offence to the faith, nay, persevering in perfect charity, each retaining what he has received, and remaining wherein, wherein he has been called. Farewell, Pope most dear in Christ. Remember us both in your holy prayers beside the ashes of the saints and in your most dutiful decisions. Following the 150 authorities of the Council of Constantinople, who decided that churches of God planted in pagan nations should live by their own laws as they had been taught by their fathers. Again, this issue of culture and centralization and freedom is at the forefront of our of our, our lives at the moment, though this decision has taken that centers into flying the face of, of local reason. I would pray for myself for for grace, humility. For all of us as we live with unusual restrictions, Lord, I pray against that resentment that eats us up. I pray too for confidence in you, that we would not be prevented by the wiles of the devil or even machinations of man from being the disciples that you call us to be. Being people of prayer, being people of worship, being people of joy people who are there and willing to show love, self-sacrificial love to others. And it does seem hard to do that at this time, but that's what we're called to be. It was the wisdom of Columbanus, the wisdom of the Council at Jerusalem as they face sensitive issues. And Lord, when we face authorities who sometimes seem to have less less of that sensitivity and wisdom give us grace to obey you in that time not in a self-centered way but in a self-sacrificing way Lord in your mercy hear our prayer Pray for doctors and nurses and those in hospitals. Give them wisdom, give them strength, protect them from 
infection, both this particular virus and anything else that could um, take them away from this critical work. There's plans to recruit many volunteers. I pray, Lord, that uh, the right people will volunteer and that they will that will be run well. Pray that those who face needs will will have their needs met. Pray for grace and love amongst those who volunteer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. all those who are worried about infection, worried about possibly having the virus or worried about loved ones who might, particularly for those concerned for the, the, the elderly, those who, who have long-term medical problems for whom this is dangerous. Do pray that you'll protect us, protect our hearts, mercy on on, the, on those who catch uh, this this virus Lord that they might be brought through or or taken safely to you Lord that they would have your way so Christ as a light illumine and guide and guide us Christ as a shield overshadow us, Christ under us, Christ over us, Christ beside us on our left and our right. This day be within and without us, lowly and meek yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom we speak, be in the mouth of each who speaks unto us. This day be within and without us, lowly and meek yet all-powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside us on our left and our right. So may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.